income, total income is $4,600, $4,616. Expenses this month, uh, $6,569. Of that, a lot of the expense was for Zombie Fest, and so was a lot of the income. Uh, plus, we had the $3,000 of donations, $1,500 to Slime and $1,500 to Montezuma for uh, ice rescue equipment. So the net loss for the month was $1,963. Uh, that being said, the checkbook is still at $39,617 at this point. Um, membership knows we're working uh, to help uh, restore the air aeration systems that uh, went down and uh, had some mechanical problems. Uh, we hope to have those back online and uh, probably not deploy them anytime yet this year, uh, but we want to have them ready to go for next year. So I think that's a you know, positive thing. You know, uh, we, we sponsor the linear aeration uh, type stuff going into the channels, and uh, you know, we think that's a good thing to continue. So, we'll, there'll be more uh, coming on that in the future. And times for us, we were just chatting about it a little earlier on. We're so proud, and and the scale of it yeah. uh, is phenomenal. I know it doesn't make sense from here, but I took a bunch of pictures at the Prairie Creek expansion. And as you remember, we successfully went for a grant and got the 40 acres adjacent to the east. And this past week, Van Tilburg Farms, uh, some, some grass planters, um, Access Engineering, Jared Ebbing, myself, we kind of lived out there. And the scale of it is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it was well timed with the plantings. That's just a dirt move. That's our existing Prairie Creek. See how beautiful to stay there for a second. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. I mean, that's nature is best. Imagine another 40 acres of that. We've got about 20 some white egrets that call it home now. As we've talked about, the neighbors tell us there's some to sleep by frogs. When was the last time you heard frogs on this lake? But, but make that treatment train one of your stops because it, it gets, it's going to be meaningful. With that expansion, we can double our capacity. Um, Coldwater Creek is right around the corner. Uh, Senator Favors' money has been presented to the controlling board, and it should be released within two weeks. That will permit us to go into the final design phase there. Uh, and Beaver Creek that we've showed you in the past, um, we applied for a grant, and that decision will be made late November, early December. Of course, we'll use the winter months in terms of the divine design element, and hopefully be ready to move in the spring. We had our fall fest a couple weeks ago, and it was a it was a great event. Hopefully, you made it out. It was a uh, a really good event that keeps growing with uh, craft vendors and food vendors, and and I told you all about the mums that they had there. That was just phenomenal. Um, and then uh, last weekend, who had problems getting around because of the traffic last Saturday? Anybody get aggravated? Well, we had the Grand Lake Marathon, and it was a, uh, I know some of you got a little aggravated because there was detours, but uh, any of us that live around the lake or been here for a while, we should know how to detour by now. So, But it was a great event. There was over 1,800 people here. Um, a lot of locals, but a lot of people from out of town. See, the buoys are gone. We pulled the buoys out for the year. It's that time of year, especially today, we can tell that. So. If you do have an adopted buoy, which many of you have for your area, um, go ahead and get it pulled out. If you need a new buoy, chain, weight, whatever, just get a hold of us at the park office. We'll get you taken care of. So um, we are going to be doing some improvements to the park again. We're going to continue to do the improvements. That's our reoccurring theme is incremental improvements. And so to the east of the uh, park office, um, you've got the St. Mary's Boat Club where all the sailboats are. And if you go a little bit further east, there's a second launch ramp there, and we call that the Fry's area. But um, we're going to be expanding that parking lot and um, and redoing the existing parking lot uh, because that parking lot is typically on a, on a good weekend. It's to capacity, um, and so we're going to be doing that. And then also Windy Point Road. If anybody's looked, when you drive down Windy Point Road, as you're going down Windy Point Road on the right hand side, the water is pretty close to the road, and uh, we decided it was time to add some riprap to that, get that berm reestablished. So we'll be doing that. And then um, this fall, we're going to be busy again this fall going into winter. Unfortunately, we're going to be busy again removing our second round of ash trees. So if you or anybody in your family or friends burns wood, um, look for that announcement to be coming out soon. Um, I'm hoping we get started here within the next month, and we'll be doing that 
all around the park, unfortunately. We're going to be doing a lot at the West Bank and a lot uh, down on the uh, East End by the park office. And so we'll make those available to folks to come out and cut and take and utilize that. So Boil down to the final seven weeks of our dredge program starting Monday. Our dredgers will be running up until the Friday before Thanksgiving, uh, kind of depending on weather and what we get in on that. So, you know, our goal right now is to run up to Thanksgiving. If we find out that we're going to have 70 degree weather like we've had some years in the past, then we might leave a uh, dredge out or two dredges, maybe not all of them, because I got a lot of guys that go hunting there right after Thanksgiving. So, we need to get them in, get them winterized and uh, get them put away for the winter just so we don't have damage done to those dredges. So, Pump a Little Dredge is uh, over at Southmore Shores. It's been digging over there for about a week, a little better than a week. Um, it's moving along pretty good. We had some issues with the spud lake this week, but uh, they got that remedied. Uh, the problem we have over there is we don't have a whole lot of capacity at Rustic Haven. So we're going to try to get that bay done uh, with what capacity that we got. We are working with the landowner over there right now uh, for uh, a lease property that uh, we should know sometime this winter uh, if we're going to be able to seize that. And then we'll develop another site. If we don't get the lagoon done, that will be the first job that we take the pump a little dredge into next year and then move over to the channels. The channels are all terrible. Uh, they all need dredge too. So. Uh, Brutus, it's uh, pumping over at the Little Chick. Uh, fantastic year up to this point with Brutus. He's at about 114,000 cubic yards as of Thursday. Uh, the captain, Mike Wilson, which actually operates this dredge, uh, I told him if he could break Brutus's record from last year, which was 157,233, that I would entertain the idea of allowing him to switch the name of the dredge, which he's a Michigan fan. Oh. I lied to him. But anything to motivate him, okay? So he's on pace to do that. This last week he produced, you know, Brutus produced 9,233 cubic yards for a week. Uh, that's fantastic. All of our dredge has been doing very well. The Hodak dredge, which is down here at Wiley Bay West, um, you know, it's kind of touching touch and go on that. We'll find good material, we'll get in the material, it's about a foot uh, thick, which you're not real productive by taking a foot of material out, but I committed to it three years ago that we'd be in there and get the thing done. Uh, so right now we're running the shorelines, getting that all opened up. We'll keep migrating the dredge towards the east and clean that out, and then the end result is going out in the front and uh, developing silt traps where that material, as it moves, will fall in the silt traps before coming back into that bay. So you'll see that dredge there for quite a long time. It'll be here, there for the remainder of this year, probably the majority of next year. Uh, so still having a few issues with that, uh, hydraulic issues. Uh, we had Ellicott here yesterday to kind of kind of go over it. Now it's going back to their hydraulic engineers. There's just a bad chatter in it, but it's not going to keep us from running. We're going to continue running, uh, so Ellicott will get that figured out. So, all in all, I'm very, very happy uh, with the dredge production this year. We lost out on the Eagle dredge that ran last year, and it produced about 117,000 cubic yards. Tough to make that up. Very, very tough to make that up. Uh, motor problems right now, it's an illegal deal, which we can't do a whole lot with, but. Uh, you know, we're fighting. We're fighting. All dredges are running. Uh, with seven weeks left, if we could produce mud like we have uh, the last couple of weeks of 15,000 cubic yards a week, you know, you're looking at an additional 103,000 cubic yards for the year, which we're at 171,437 right now. So it gives us just shy of what we were last year, you know, and it's pretty good just because we've done more channel work this year, taking Brutus probably up in the channels. They're the little chick that we shouldn't have them in there. Shouldn't have them in there because you're, you're spending all your time advancing that dredge, moving anchors, taking the shortcuts where we want Brutus out taking 100, 120 foot swings. So, um, but I'm very proud, you know, very proud of what they've done. So, jobs that we've completed this year Sailboat Club, Sunnyside Channels, uh, Cozy Marina. We're going to be finishing up the little chick this year. Uh, just depending on where we're at with Rustic, you might end up seeing the Pump a Little Dredge move out. 
uh, and being moved over to Little Chick just to get a few dead end channels uh, that we couldn't get into with Brutus. But uh, as soon as a, you know, you stop more short people in here, uh, as soon as we de develop a site, you know, our, we'll have a dredge back over there getting your channels done. So. All right. um, just a quick update on Ag Solutions. Laura Johnson from Heidelberg that gave the presentation back in July, June. Um, she gave a presentation here on the water quality monitoring stations that they have in the watershed. She went to the Ag Solutions meeting this month and gave an, a little bit of an update um, well, the presentation she gave here is very informative about the sources of phosphorus and an overview of runoff. Obviously that um, monitoring is going to continue moving forward and as that moves forward we'll, we'll be able to collect more data off that. That makes a little bit more sense. But um, Laura does a very good job of bringing it down to what I would consider a local level. So we appreciate her coming down for that presentation. Um, when we started uh, the nutrient management plans with the distressed watershed back in 2012, we had 156 producers that met that rule. Right now we've dropped down to 149. Uh, the biggest reason is um, we ha had a few operations get out of business, they've sold their livestock, and then we've also determined that a couple guys that submitted their plans actually didn't meet the rule requirements. As we move into this fall, which is our busy season for nutrient management plans. Right now, as the crops come off, we'll be collecting a lot of soil samples to update our soil samples. And guys will be collecting manure analysis, which brings up well, a lot of manure is going to be going out in the next month in the watershed. Um, but anyways, as, as we go through this fall, we'll probably drop an additional two or three people off that list just because um, figuring out that they don't meet the rules. Uh, cover crops, as you drive the watershed, I was out this week, we have a large amount of cover crops. They look really good. This has been a fantastic year for cover crops that were planted in early August, September. Um, they're all starting to come up. They look really good. we got a lot of growth on them. So as we drive around, you can see um, a lot of those out there. The staff in the office have been monitoring manure applications, um, just you know, visual checks to see if, if anything's um, causing a red flag. We have not received any complaints in the watershed this month. Uh, all the complaints, we've had two or three complaints outside the watershed. They, the ones outside the watershed, we didn't have any discharges to waters of the state, but um, what was interesting to me is uh, the complaints that we had outside the watershed actually had nutrient management plans, which is a good thing. That's typically a non-case, but um, that was good news. On the case that we have in court, on the one nutrient management plan, sentencing um, was agreed to be postponed by the AG's office, the Attorney General's office, and ODNR have agreed to delay that um, sentencing until late October, early November. They really haven't given us any details on that. I know they're talking with the defendant's lawyers, so 